Shalom, welcome to our Friday afternoon talk before Erev Shabbat Kodesh B'Shalach, Parshat Shabbat Shira. Uh, we have a little piece of Zohar from this week's Parsha that really gives us a formula for success in life and certainly a way to deal with darkness, despair, uh, depression, and all the things that really get in our way of enjoying our existence here on this planet. We are in Parshat B'Shalach and the, the rabbi tells us That Shigayon le David, Zine tush pahan chavu kamaihu de nevi'e de mishmerei alaihu ruach nevu'ah. There were many types, many types of praises that the prophets used to lift up their spirits. Not just one, many different types of praises they would use to lift up their spirits. And Kamadatamar, as it is written, Fagata heaven of Imiradim Bamavalif Nehem Nevo Tova Khaliva Gomer. And it it brings a Pasuk from Shmuel. It says that uh, Shaul went and he met the prophets and they were singing and dancing and they they had um all kinds of musical instruments before him. But what we have here is this idea that I need help if I want to reach a higher level. I can't expect just to go up to heaven and God's going to talk to me. I need a little, little entryway, a little, a little pass, right? A little ticket to the palace. And the ticket to the palace, my friends, is praise. If you don't, we're going to speak about the brokenness part about this in just a minute. But praise is the way you get in to the upper worlds. And, and it also says over there that that when Shaul was depressed, he would say, bring me a musician to play. Lift me up with a little bit of music. So when you're down, music obviously has that power. And even, even more so, the prophet Habakkuk, who needed these things more than anyone, to bring down a spirit and to create a pleasant fragrance in his place. In other words, when you have depression, or you have sadness, or anger, or disappointment, or resentment, all those things, they create a negative spiritual scent. And the metaphor of scent is not just a metaphor. That people do put off a certain smell, a certain scent of their, of their unfortunate state. And, and Habakkuk was one who uh, experienced a lot of this, apparently. And so we see that he, he, they would draw down a good spirit through the music. In other words, the, the tikkun for all these bad things is not to go in there and wrestle with them. It's to bring something good in the midst of the downness, right? Of the pressure, of the lachats, of whatever it is that's, that's bringing you down. And to bring down on him the spirit of prophecy, not just any spirit, but the spirit of what God wants. The spirit of his voice, his connection. And all the prophets were like this. And, and, and Moshe Rabbeinu, of course, the greatest of all the prophets, was also able to achieve that because of this ability to praise. So you see, now let's ask a simple question. When I'm down and I'm depressed and I'm in stress, it's what's the story about? It's about me. It's about my feelings. I don't feel good. I don't have a job. I don't have this. I'm not married. I don't have kids. I don't have a house. You know, there's endless lists that can make us depressed and sad and down. But it's always about me. And what's praise about? Praise is about something else. Praise is the gate out, out of our own trap. That when I praise Hashem or good people, righteous people, then automatically I create an opening to leave the trap of my own situation. No one's saying deny your feelings. No one's saying lie to yourself about how you're feeling. All the prophet is saying is turn your focus, turn your camera a little bit and praise something else. And automatically you are redeemed. You are taken out of the cage, out of the trap 
of that negativity. Tachazeh, the Zohar goes on to tell us, Kad nafku Yisrael in Mitzrayim, and so too all the Jews. 3.2 million people in this week's Parsha came out of Egypt. Their spirit was broken within them. Now they had just gone through a year of miracles with Moses to destroy the Egyptians, and their spirit's still broken. Well, it's understandable, understandable, because they were they were being chased by Pharaoh and his army. But and they heard the praises of the angels in heaven. God opened up the loudspeaker. You know, the praises of the angels are there. We just don't happen to have the right frequency of hearing to hear them. But God can just turn a dial, and you will hear the fact that there is praise of God throughout creation. And if I hear it, then I'm a very lucky person. But you can be so broken that you can even hear those praises. But they came out of Egypt and they didn't feel the joy. They still felt broken when they saw the angels. And at this time, all the angels came out with all the chariots. And uh, the chariot, of course, is, is, is a metaphor for the for transcendental energy being delivered from above to below or from below to above. Because that's what a chariot does. It carries things from place to place. And here we're talking about the high spiritual energy of angels and other types of spiritual entities that have this power. So they saw these things too. And all of them were praising. Now here you are, the Jewish people are being chased out of Egypt. Pharaoh's after them. Everybody's upset. They're stressed. And the angels, they're not stressed. Well, okay, you could say, well, they're not there. But we know that whatever we're feeling down here, they're feeling above. So how could they be happy when we're not happy? When we're, 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 we're broken. And so God aroused our spirits. He lifted us up a little bit. Right? And they heard the voices. And then, as he turned up the volume a little bit, then they started to hear the praise better. And then they started to praise and they were lifted up. They were lifted up from within. And and the, the the interesting last two words of the paragraph says lo parchu <laughs> their souls did not fly out of their bodies so I think that's a good thing right later on they did when they heard the ten commandments that was it they took off they died for for a few seconds and then they came back and anyways so you see here that that praise is when you understand the power of finding the good and seeing the good. And speaking the good, you automatically break the boundary, the bonds of the depression, of the sadness, of the pressure. Because whether or not you have the things you want in life, you still, all you really have is now. And what's at your hands now? And what's what you're capable of now? So if we can stay attached to the praise of the now, nothing can hurt us. Nothing can harm us. Because we are only in that which we have in front of us. And if I turn it to praise immediately, the escape hatch is open and we are freed. Now when a person goes away from serving God. Okay, this happens, right? And then, well, then what happens is he knows his brokenness within. He knows the brokenness. He feels it. In other words, if I'm trying to serve God, I might not be doing a very good job of it, but I'm trying. But if I just say, forget it, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to praise. I'm not going to put on, on put to fill in. I'm not going to talk to God. That only worsens the break. And that's what it says. It causes his spirit to be broken. And so too, Yisrael, when the Jews came out of Egypt, they tasted the taste of death. Now, what is this? What is the taste of death? Ask yourself that question. <laughs> you know, they don't. That's not in the spice rack over there on the wall, right? They don't sell you the taste of death even in the voodoo shop, right? <laughs> what is the taste of death? Ask yourself. I mean, I've gone to a few. I'm sure all of us have gone to a few funerals. We've seen some sad things. We've experienced all kinds of uh, horrible things here in Eretz Israel and murder and whatnot. What's the taste of death? 
It's the absence of the taste of life. That's all it is. You just take away. The minute I don't feel like I'm in love with life, I hate life. The minute I don't have the joy of the now and the beauty of the now and the gift and the gratitude of what I have, I erase it. I get the opposite, which is the taste of death. So death is just the absence of life. But it can come in many flavors and many packages. But it says that God healed them. So this is a special invocation here. This is not the normal situation. You know, the people are fleeing Egypt. God is with us. He knows what's happening. And God went before them day and night. Now remember, they had the pillar of fire at night. They had the clouds of glories uh, during the daytime. But you can still be broken in the midst of a miracle, which is pretty outrageous if you think about it. You think about it, if you see these, the sea opens, the pillar of fire, the clouds of glory, Moses with this staff, you know, you'd think that would be enough to put me in a good mood. But it's not necessarily because we are locked inside our own feelings first. And once, But once I turn to praise, I break the window, I climb outside my own little cage, my own little cell, and, I, and I'm free again. And then all, what happened was a pleasant scent, God sent, <laughs> without the sea, right? God sent them a pleasant odor, and that healed them. Now the pleasant odor we always associate with the Torah, but in meditation, even if you're in a bad mood, smell a bottle of cinnamon. Pick up a flower. Even if you're in a bad mood, find something that smells nice to you and take a deep breath of it. You will see it will change you a little bit. But it's only the little bit I need to switch the scale, you know. And and so Hashem did it in a big way because, well, he's big, you know. He's, he's the one and only. But he's got 3.2 million people to deal with. He's got to make them feel good. So he put out this beautiful fragrance. All their ways brought out this scent of healing. So now you see that the healing is begins with the change of our mood. In other words, I have pain. My back hurts. My head hurts. My arm hurts. You know, there's a lot of things that can hurt out there. And what we mostly what we what do we do when we're in pain? We pay attention to the pain, and that just increases and compounds it, as opposed to saying, "Wait a second, instead of I my hand hurts, my back, whatever hurts, okay, I acknowledge it, but I don't focus on it. Rather, I go to something else, a good scent, like we said, a, a new idea. I take my mind off the pain, and guess what? The pain is automatically diminished." And this is what he says, God brought down this scent of refua. What is the scent of refua? It's that which takes your mind to something else. When it nasim legufam, and the, the scent went into their bodies and they were healed. And now this is the, the real clincher. And from the voices of praise that they heard, they were healed as well. And then they were happy. And their spirit was restored. So if you, even if you don't feel good and you're in a bad mood and whatever it is, if you hear somebody else praise something else, you cannot stay in the same place. Siegley writes, the smell of light. That's beautiful because you know, light is what we see and smell is what we is from the nose. But when they're unified, you have this synesthetic experience where all your senses have it, are united and impact your mood and your feeling and your mind and your mind opens and your heart opens and all of a sudden I feel better. So you see, the beginning of healing is not medicine. It's not drugs. It's not pills. It's hearing the right things. It's experiencing the positive side of things because, you know, I could, I could spend my whole life complaining about what I what, what's not right. But one moment of finding the good point one more in myself and in others, and all of a sudden the entire world changes to, to the positive. So this is this is like a really important Torah I, I feel for us now because we're looking at the world. You know, every time I see the news, I feel the taste of death. It's right there on the airways. 
You know, they can't tell you about the people that get better. They can only tell you about all the people that are getting sick and all the people that are dying. And, and then someone else tells you no, and then this hospital's full, and this hospital's empty, and the fake news is just keeping us co completely off balance. Okay, that's a, another story unto itself, because maybe it's not fake news. Maybe they're both true. Maybe some places the hospitals are full, and some places they're not. But either way, I've got to find the good in it. And the good in this pandemic, the good in this disease, the good in everything that's happening is that humanity is getting a wake-up call that we are getting ready for the Great Reset. But the Great Reset is going to be a, a reset of holiness, of truth, of goodness. And so Hashem has to remove some of the silliness that we've been, you know, preoccupying ourselves with for generations. And once we get rid of that silliness, we'll have a vessel uh, to receive the goodness within, the, the, the true spark of our holy soul, uh, the soul that we say, Hai olam nata God planted the eternal world inside us. It's nowhere else. You carry it around inside you. We just don't know it. But it's there. Hai olam. The life of all the worlds is inside us, and our job is to unfold it. Just like the flower, we keep opening, keep blossoming, and it keeps coming back with more and more of that beautiful fragrance that heals us, that wakes us up, that makes us feel good, that changes our mood. So Shabbos is here. The clouds are coming down. It's, it's pretty crazy out here. The wind is blowing, and the, the cold air is uh, waking us up. So we're, we're here, and we're going to be here next week on all the platforms we look forward to, to, uh, to carrying on with our daily Patreon class in Rabbi Nachman. We've been learning about the, the, the taste of the letters. So this is another level of the panemius of the world. And uh, when you read about this, you see that when we eat, we don't even know what we're eating, truly, because we're partaking of the life force of the universe. So God bless you. Have a great Shabbat, and we'll see you next week.